make room for you to move Open our eyes to see your glory Drawing us deeper in you Make Room, that's our series and title, uh, the title of our series. Uh, it's a study on the, uh, the work, the person, the power, the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives as believers. And what we wanted to achieve is that, you know, instead of acting and relying on the flesh, we are to step aside for the Holy Spirit, allowing Him to lead us and to keep us in step with Him. And that's, that's why we uh, wanted to get into this series. Uh, week number one, we talked about the person of the Holy Spirit, who He is. He's the third person of the Trinity. Today, we're going to talk about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And so we'll be in Acts chapter 2, if you need to look for that in your Bibles. Um, and and uh, before we jump in, let's pray. Lord, we just pray for this word. We ask that as we read the word today, we ask that you will help us understand clearly what, what you are trying to tell us. I pray, Lord, that the word will not just be informational, but transformational. That, Lord, we will leave this place changed, transformed, Lord, with a different perspective, understanding things from your word, not from our perspective. We commit to you this time of study in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Last year, my, my eldest son and our second, uh, they took a trip from, from here, from Manila to L.A. Uh, my, my second child, our daughter, um, she's still a student, she's 19, but she's also working part-time, she's a social media influencer. And so she, uh, Netflix actually sent her to, uh, to LA uh, because a show was, uh, it was starting, uh, uh, how do you, premiere, the premiere of a show. And so they went there and uh, when I, I, I don't know if it was FaceTime or I called them, they said that they were eating Shopao in the airport in Manila. Okay, this was a, this was during in, uh, before they left going to to LA. It was they were in the airport and they were eating their dinner Shopao. Okay, they were scrimping because the budget was tight. Okay, and so uh, it was Shopao, and, and they were complaining about how expensive the Shopao was, right? In the air, air, airport, I said, well, that's that's you know airport price for you, but. So they did, they, they ate that and then they flew off. And then, uh, I don't know if they knew then or before that, that uh, they were flying first class, okay? Now, I guess they didn't understand, because you know, the ticket was covered and all. They didn't, they, they didn't uh, realize that with the first class actually came a lounge, right? And so, so they, after they realized, Ah, we should have gone to the lounge. We, we could have had unlimited shopao, okay? <laughs> or, we, you know, we didn't have to worry about how slow the Wi-Fi of the airport was because in the lounge, it was quicker and faster. You have uh, dedicated Wi-Fi there, internet. And so, uh, and, and good thing, okay, after getting there, they, were, they stayed a week and then it was a turnaround trip. The lounge in, in LAX, I think, that's where they stayed. And, you know, of course, they enjoyed the lounge and they appreciated that one now. I think about that story and how sometimes we have the resources available for us and yet we don't avail of them. Maybe because of ignorance, maybe because we don't know, maybe because of fear, for whatever reason, we have no ability or we don't get to access them. And so I think about our walk with God. I think about the Holy Spirit and His work in our lives, is it possible that God has made His power available, but we have not just accessed it? Is that even possible? And I think about my own life, I think about our lives, and sometimes we go start a day and we, you know, just drive off to work or go to the campus and we're flustered and we don't know what to do. Maybe... It's a matter of just sitting down and saying, Lord, help me. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, lead me. Holy Spirit, empower me. Is that possible? That sometimes we have missed out on a few things in life or even just to, to access the power of God because we, we, we didn't avail of, it, avail of it. In Acts chapter 19, verse 2, if you would remember, Paul went to the church in Ephesus and met some of the believers there. 
and he asked them a question, have you received the Holy Spirit? And the believers in Ephesus said, what do you mean? We have not heard that there was a Holy Spirit. And so obviously they have not received the Holy Spirit. But when they received the Spirit of God, they were empowered and they started to, you know, pre uh, speak in tongues and start preaching the gospel. And that's what we see happening in the New Testament. And for us, you know, we've, we've heard of the Holy Spirit. There's a school <laughs> called Holy Spirit. Uh, there are songs about the Holy Spirit, okay? There are, we, there's a church that's the, uh, a parish, uh, Holy Spirit. But who is the Holy Spirit and what does He do? What can He do in our lives? Now, in the New Testament, if you look at Acts, the church was growing. In fact, it was unprecedented growth. It was an unstoppable church. Why do I say that? Because from 120 uh, in, in, in a day, it grew to about 3,000, the Bible says. And then not only that, the people were being added daily to the church. Plus, it grew from addition to multiplication. It was exponential. It no longer just added people. Even religious leaders were, being, were coming to faith in Christ. Not only that, not just groups of people, but entire towns we're coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, even Gentiles. Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. Peter was the apostle to the Jews. And now from Cornelius to the others, uh, so started coming to Christ. And then churches were increasing in number. And then the word, word of the Lord grew rapidly. It was being spread all over uh, the region. You have to ask the question, what was the turning point? You see an unstoppable church, but what was the turning point? Right? Kind of like the Warriors-Rockets game this morning. What was the turning point, right? Okay, the third quarter, right? For this one right here, it was Acts chapter 2. That was the turning point. So what, do we, what can we learn uh, as we get into Acts chapter 2 today? Because... What happened was the church coming from the upper room, all right, they were praying, they were seeking the Lord, and then suddenly the Holy Spirit comes, and they were sent not just from the upper room, now they went to the uttermost. The goal that God has for us is for, not, for us to not just stay in the upper room, He sends us out so that we go proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. That the goal is not just so that we can be soaked in His presence, but we will be sent for His presence, for the glory of God, for, to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's normally the tendency that we have. How, how we wish we can have Lee with us everywhere we go, right? And we just worship the Lord and we'll be in the presence forever. Uh, we wish we can stay in God's presence. That's what Peter, James, and John wanted to do. They were in the mountain of transfiguration, if you remember. And they saw Moses and Elijah and Jesus transfigured in all his glory. The Bible says his face uh, uh, was shining like the sun and his clothes were bright as light. They said, Lord, can we just camp here? Let's just stay here forever. But God, you know, Jesus had to, of course, lead them down from the mountaintop experience down to where the people are, where the mission was. And so for us, we want to stay in the presence, and that's wonderful, and that's great. How we wish we can stay in the four walls of the church and, and, and keep this as our refuge. But after, God calls, and set, calls us and sends us out so that we can be a witness for Him. Now, Acts chapter 2. <clears throat> the Bible says when the day of Pentecost arrived, Pentecost um, is 50 days after the Passover. Passover, if you remember, was a feast that se they celebrated year after year during, after Exodus. They... Were, they were saved and rescued from the Egyptians and the angel of death passed over their homes because they had the blood of the lamb on their doorposts. And then because they were saved and rescued, it became a yearly annual celebration. 50 days after that is the feast of the Pentecost. Pentecost is the celebration of the harvest. It was the festival of the harvest of wheat and barley. 50 days after Passover, <clears throat> which, by the way, last Sunday was Pentecost Sunday um, that, that they would celebrate. 
And so the, the church was all together in one place, and then the Holy Spirit comes, and then revival breaks out. Now, I want to say this, that God will bless a church that is united. And it's going to be hard for him to bless a disunited church and to bring revival in any group of people, which is why unity is so important. Psalm 133 talks about how blessed and pleasant it is to see brothers dwell together in unity. They were together in one place. And then in verse uh, 2, and then suddenly, everybody say suddenly. Suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a, mush, uh, a mighty rushing wind. How many of you know God is a God of suddenlies? God is a God of suddenlies. You know, um, I, 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 one, of, uh, one, of the people, uh, one of the people from church gave birth to twins. And because of that, they were not sure how their, their, their bill actually started to balloon. Um, and, and they weren't prepared for it uh, because there were other complications. Uh, but they were just testifying uh, about a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago that because, you know, because of they, were, they were not prepared for all the complications you know, because of the bill, uh, so suddenly somebody came and blessed them with the amount that they needed. And how many of you know God is a God of suddenly in your, in your provision, amen, in your healing, in all the different areas of life, God has the ability to do that. Yesterday, I was with a, with a dad, and uh, he was telling me he was in a business meeting, right? He's a businessman. He was, he, he was in a business meeting, and then while having a meeting, suddenly God dropped an idea of another business for him. How many of you know God can do that? Okay? But right now, if you're a businessman, listen to the word first, okay? Don't think about a business. But suddenly, God can do that. All right, healing. I, I remember a, a, a lady one time during our prayer, uh, prayer uh, worship and prayer night. Uh, she was in this in the service. All right, and then we would, we we were just worshiping and praying, and then suddenly the Lord healed her from her back pain. God can do that. God is a God of suddenly, and suddenly there came from a from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and they were filled, and the filled uh, the entire house where they were sitting. All right. And then, and divided tongues of fire, as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. Now, scholars are trying to figure out what these were. Some would say it's literal fire. Some of them would say it looked like fire. But whatever it is, it was, it was a physical manifestation of the presence of God. And so it was there, okay? The presence of God was there. And so they saw, everybody saw, right? And, and something was happening, and it, it freaked out some people. It, it was, it was, it, people thought they were drunk at 9 a.m. These guys are drinking wine at early uh, 9 a.m., and so there were accusations that they were, you know, drunk. But you see, the Holy Spirit is poured out for our infilling and enabling. The Holy Spirit comes, and the Holy Spirit is poured out to us so that we can be filled and we can be enabled. The Bible says in verse 4, filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That the Holy Spirit came, the Holy Spirit filled them to overflow. Right? It was poured out during that time. And then the Bible says they started speaking in other tongues. And they started speaking in another language that was unknown to them. Now, in Scripture, you will notice that there are different kinds of tongues, all right? And I'm going to talk to you about that if I could lay a foundation for us today, all right? And so there are different, there's the one that is for public ministry, and there's one for private ministry. The public ministry would be for the church as a congregation and, and even for the world, but there's one that is for private ministry. And let me talk to you about that. When you talk about public ministry, Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 22, it's a sign. What does it mean? The tongues are a sign not for believers, but for unbelievers. It's kind of like what happened in Acts chapter 2. They started speaking in tongues, and the Bible says those that listened heard, even though they were from different nations, heard the preaching that God is a mighty God and the mighty works of God. They heard it in their own language. 
They were coming from different nations and surrounding areas and regions. Phrygia, Asia, Pamphylia, Judea, Egypt, as far as Arabia and Rome, they were coming together because of the Feast of the Harvest, the Pentecost. So they were coming together, right, because of the Feast. And then, sobrang, sobrang strategic talaga yung Holy Spirit. How many of you know this, the Holy Spirit is so strategic, right? And he, he, the Holy Spirit waits until everybody comes together and then boom, His power comes and takes over the meeting. And so, he, he, he gives and enables the disciples to speak in, in a language that those people could actually understand. Okay, that's the public ministry. Now, there's another one would be for interpretation. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 talks about this. Another working of miracles, prophecy. These are the gifts of the Spirit, distinguishing spirits, various kinds of tongues, and other interpretation of tongues. And so... There are, there's, a, there's a kind of tongue where uh, somebody will speak in an unknown language and there's also an interpretation, okay? It's a proclamation of God's word and power, but there's an interpretation as a result. And the Bible says there has to be two or three that interpret it. If there's no interpretation, then the person should just keep quiet or pray, okay, to God in that, on, that tongue. Okay, that's what, the, what, that's what Paul was saying. Now, why? Because you don't want in a meeting, he says, if you're, all meet, if you're in a meeting and you're all speaking in tongues, it's going to freak people out, right? It's going to weird people out. And, and if there's no interpretation, why? Because the Bible says God is not a God of confusion, but he's a God of order, a God of peace. He's not a God of disorder, but of peace. Right? And so he's saying... Keep the order, all right? Now, that's the public ministry. Let's talk about the private ministry. There's personal prayer. There's the prayer language that God gives us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he says, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. There's a prayer language that God gives us when he empowers us and he pours out his spirit and fills us with his spirit. We pray in a tongue. It seems like, I don't understand it. It's unintelligible, but my spirit prays, though my mind seems unfruitful. In other words, I don't understand what I'm saying. Verse 15 says, when I, what am I to do? What should I do now? Well, I'll pray with my spirit, okay, in that prayer language, but I also pray, pray with my mind, meaning I'll pray in English, I'll pray in Tagalog, okay, I'll pray in Chinese, I'll pray whatever would be your language, right? I pray with my spirit, and I'll pray also with my mind. I will sing praise with my spirit, but also sing praise with my mind. Now, that's why in Jude chapter 1 verse 20, how do you build yourself up? You pray in the Holy Spirit. There's a language that God gives us to edify ourselves, as the Bible says. And then also intercession. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for or what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Have you ever prayed for someone? Yes, you do. You know the information. He's sick of this kind of illness. But you are in deep prayer. It's like words are no longer enough. It's like you cannot, you don't know what to pray for anymore. You run out of words. And so now the Spirit now prays and intercedes. In verse 29, I didn't put that anymore there, but it, the, it's the Spirit that intercedes on our behalf. And so there's the prayer language that comes. And that's why, uh, that's why Paul says, okay, don't forbid speaking in tongues. There's tongues that you, again, for public ministry, for the non-believers and for the church, and there's the tongues for private ministry, for personal intercession, and for personal prayer, okay? And so now the Holy Spirit has been poured out, the Bible says, in Acts chapter 2. Now let's go back, okay? Acts chapter 1, you, you, you step back a bit. Jesus was about to resurrect, uh, sorry, ascend into heaven, and he tells his disciples, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses, in Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, right? Because the disciples were asking, 
Lord, are you now going to establish your kingdom? And to the Jewish mindset, they understand what, what this was. Are you now going to establish your rulership? Are you going to kick these Romans out? Are you going to be now king of kings and lord of lords? Well, Jesus says, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons. That's going to happen. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Now, what does this look like for us? Let me bring in some application. That the Holy Spirit has come. The Holy Spirit... He wants to pour out his power upon us. In fact, Ephesians chapter 5 says, be, Do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. The word fill there in the Greek is a present imperative, meaning could be, continually be, be continually filled by the Spirit. Not one time, but every single moment, every single day, every time, be consistently filled perpetually be filled by the Spirit of God, okay? And so, what do we do now? What's, the, what's our response, okay? How do we actually do this? How does it look like for us? Because not very many of us will go to the ends of the earth, right? Um, our pastor, Pastor Dan, okay, go, went to Pakistan. That's why uh, Zaym is here. Are there, are, there, are, there, are there missionaries? Mads, I saw earlier, she, uh, she, go, she went to uh, uh, South Korea, our, our, some of our missionaries go to different nations of the world, but not very many of us will go to the nations as missionaries, right? Look at the person beside you, okay? Not that person. Maybe some of them, yes, but not exactly that person, okay? So for us now, what does that mean? Well, that could be not necessarily the next country or nation or continent, but it could be across campus, if you're a student, or within your campus, or some of you here, it's your office mate. Some of you here, it's your relative. Some of you, you're going to have a reunion today. Sometimes people have reunions on Sundays, right? Then maybe God wants to use you. Have you thought about that? That you're the missionary for your family, for your relatives, for your friends, um, I just talked to somebody earlier. They're going to have a, a, a high school reunion, okay? Have you thought about that, that maybe you are the missionary God wants to send in that group of people? You may not go to Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth, but that's where God's calling. For us as a church, BGC, this is where God's called us to be in. It's no longer just Bonifacio Global City. It's to bring the gospel to the city, okay? And so God has called us to reach out. And some of you, I know you have small groups within, sometimes I look at, uh, I see Uptown, uh, all small groups there, the food hall, it, it's like the, up, uh, it's the assembly hall too of every nation, okay? It's filled with, filled with small groups or even Esamora food court, right? That's why they have the sign there, please buy food or something. They don't just, <laughs> they do have a sign, okay? And so why? Because we're, we're permeating, the gospel is spreading, and it's an unstoppable church. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has been poured out in all of us. You will receive power, Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes and you'll be my witnesses. Now, you might ask the question, how? How do we actually do this? Okay, what does it mean for us? What's the next step? You know, Paul told Timothy, okay, you've not been given a spirit of fear, but you've been given a, a spirit of love, power, love, and sound mind. Power, love, and sound mind, all right? And so the Spirit of God is poured out to us. It's the Spirit of power. Gives us power to say no to sin. Listen, some of us here today, we're stuck. You're stuck in an addiction, and you can't get out of it. The Holy Spirit has the ability to set you free. He can give you power to be set free from that today. You're in a rut, or you're in a routine, or you're in a cycle. Okay? You have no ability to get yourself out of that. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. God has the ability to set you free. Okay? I remember a story of a, a guy I met. This was years ago. Um, he was in an addiction. And, and he was, he's been trying to get rid of nicotine okay? and smoking from his body. Right? And so 
uh, he, but one, after, one morning, actually, he heard a preaching of the word, heard somebody preach about the omnipresence of God, talked about Jesus being everywhere, okay? uh, God being omnipresent. And so right after church, you know, his usual habit, he'd get out his pack of cigarettes, get a stick, all right, and he would, uh, he, he lit the cigarette, and, and he remembered the preaching. He said, if, if God is everywhere, where do I puff? Where do I blow? Okay, because if I blow in the front, then maybe Jesus is here. If I write, it, it really sounded silly and funny, okay, but it was a revelation. If I, if, I, if I blow on my right or my left, maybe Jesus will get, you know, will cough because of my... Uh, uh, because of my, 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 my cigarette. But you know what? After that revelation, so that was the last cigarette okay, he ever had, and he threw his pack of cigarette, and that was the last one he ever had. He was set free from that addiction just because of that revelation. How many of you know the Spirit of God can do that? The Spirit of God has the ability to set us free by his power. And so power to say no to sin and to say yes to him. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Maybe you're wondering today, how can I be, you know, how can I do what God's called me to do? How can I keep, how can I say no okay, to my boyfriend who keeps on, incur, you know, pulling me into this room? Or how can I say no to clicking into this website? How can I say, well, the Holy Spirit has the ability to do that. He can give you power. And then power and then love. Power, love, and sound mind. We think about the love uh, uh, that God, has the, uh, God can give and overwhelm you. Now, if you, um, I was reading a, an article about um, Festo Kivengere, okay, um, from Uganda. It's a bishop from Ang an Anglican Christian leader. And this was uh, several decades ago when Idi Amin was the president of Uganda. Uh, Idi Amin, if you remember your history, um, he, over, he took over the government forcefully and became the president of Uganda, self-proclaimed. And so in his, under his government or under his governance, about 300,000 people died, massacred under his leadership. And part of this was uh, Bishop Festus' friend was also killed because they started saying things against, or at least trying to protest against the killings. And uh, his friend, um, Janani Luwum, okay, that's the name of the, I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, okay, but his friend, uh, JL, okay, um, uh, was, mass was killed also, all right? And, and there, because of that, uh, there was hatred and anger um, and unforgiveness in his heart that was really brewing. And in, in fact, after some time, the Holy Spirit just came upon and spoke to him, and, and, and this is what he had to write. He says, on the cross, Jesus said, this is Bishop Festo. On the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. As, as evil as Idi Amin is, how can I do less toward him? The Holy Spirit showed me that I was getting hard in my spirit. So I had to ask for forgiveness from the Lord and for grace to love President Amin more. This was fresh air for my, for my tired soul. I knew I had seen the Lord and been released. Love filled my heart. He actually wrote a book, I Love Idi Amin, okay, which is an interesting title for his book. But you know when, when unforgiveness, when bitterness, when hatred, when anger overwhelms your heart? How many of you know heart can get so calloused? And I don't know if anybody here has gone through it or going through it right now. But you see, the Holy Spirit can break that hardness in your heart and make it tender again. And whatever, and you might say, Paolo, you don't understand what was done to me. You have no clue what people have said you have no understanding how, what they've accused me of. Listen, the Holy Spirit can come, can breathe life the way he breathed life in Ezekiel 37, the valley of dry bones, and then, boom, God has changed, brought, brought life into that situation. See, God can bring 
uh, whatever hurt and pain and difficulty and unforgiveness, God can change that and turn that around. As we end, love, power, and then sound mind. How many of you know God can give you a sound mind? How many of you say, yeah, my, my friend needs that sound mind, right? Okay, and so just, uh, uh, or even self-discipline, as the, uh, some, some translations would, would, uh, would give it. Sound mind, wisdom. How many of you here, you, you need wisdom, right? The Holy Spirit can give you wisdom. If you lack wisdom, the Bible says he will give it to you generously without finding fault, James 1.5. Wisdom for your work, wisdom for school, right? Wisdom for the next business proposal, wisdom to parent your children today. A sound mind to be able to, to, to make the necessary uh, uh, decisions so that you can move ahead in all that is on your plate right now. Decision in the investments, decision in, in all that, you, that are, you're faced with right now. And even self-discipline, self-discipline from, you know, you know, I don't know, whether that would be uh, social media or ours on the internet or, or watching uh, Netflix for, for a long time, right? And so just sound and self-discipline. How many of you know God can do that? And so I want to pray as we end our time today, okay? We want to ask the Holy Spirit to fill us, to empower us. And He wants to change us, wants to give us that you know, spirit of love, power, and sound mind so that we can become witnesses. It's going to be difficult to become a witness if there's no distinction. Why would I believe you? You're just like that person I know. Why will I believe you? There's no difference. If your life is like this and her life is like that, then why change? There's really no distinction. And so I want to be able to pray for us that the Holy Spirit will empower us to live a life that will honor Him, that will bring praise and glory to His name. Amen? Let's bow our heads for a moment. I'll ask the worship team to come up. Lord, thank you for, Lord, this afternoon. And we look at Scripture, and the Scripture has given us all the answers to our questions. Lord, when we're stuck and we don't know where to go and how to actually move ahead, Lord, the, the fire of your Holy Spirit, Lord, empowers us to push ahead. Lord, when we don't even know what to do, Lord, the wisdom of the Spirit is given to us so that, Lord, we can make the right decisions. And so, Lord, today, Lord, we, we don't want to be in a hurry. We just want to hear and listen and receive the, the fresh infilling of your spirit today. Here's what we're going to do. Can we all stand? And I'm going to ask our, our team here to sing this song. And, and I'm going to pray, okay? Don't leave yet because I'm going to pray. I'm going to, I'm going to ask them to sing this song and then we'll, we'll pray together.
fresh in filling and outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon our lives. Can we just lift up our hands? If, if, you're, if that's your prayer, Lord, give me, fill me afresh by your Holy Spirit. Give me wisdom to be able to make the right decision, a sound mind, uh, uh, love to be, uh, power to love people, uh, to release unforgiveness, to make the right decisions, to, uh, to drop a, 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 a good idea, whatever that would be. The Holy Spirit has the ability to break us out of our addictions, to be able to release us from wrong thinking and wrong mindsets and, and, and perspectives that have bound us all these years. Lord, I pray that you would break in the name of Jesus every uh, chain that is enslaving us. Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit, Lord God, would be empowered, or will be outpoured, will be poured out even now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Pour out your Spirit upon us. Fill us afresh. Fill us afresh. We receive your Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, we lift up our hands and we say we need your Holy Spirit. We we rely and we depend on your Holy Spirit each and every day, Lord. We said to keep in step with the Spirit. Lord, we want to keep in step with your Spirit even now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We receive the fresh infilling of the Spirit of God. Just lift up your hands. Just say, Lord, I receive it. Lord, I receive it. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, you will empower us. Lord, at the end of it all, so that your name will be glorified so that your gospel will be preached. And Lord, disciples are made and we become witnesses for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.